Hello lovely people. Hello and welcome because I am joined today by <gasps> Stevie Bobby. I know you're all desperately, wonderfully excited. I am too. And it's been so many years since we made a video together. Has it? Yeah, it's been like 2019 I think was the last time. My goodness. And now you actually live in my city. Yeah, and it only took three months for us to, neither of us to be sick at the same time. <laughs> or not that sick anyway. That's very debatable. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully the lung infection will clear soon. So, many people are intrigued by our friendship because we're a little different. I don't think we're that different. <laughs> well, I don't either. But the internet does. Yeah, didn't, um, when we first started hanging out, didn't people send you warnings about me? Saying yes. that I was gonna like ruin your marriage or something. Well, actually they didn't send them to me, they sent them to my wife. Oh, watch out for said, Stevie. don't let Jessica be friends with Stevie, it will ruin your marriage. Oh man. She's very naughty. The internet. Jessica's very nice and Stevie is naughty. There we I go. I think that makes a great friendship. You're the nice aunt and I'm the naughty aunt. Exactly. And so we thought we'd make some wonderful videos where we give advice. Yeah. In our very, very different ways. Wait, let's talk about the thing. What do we have in common? Um, <laughs> <laughs> we both have connective tissue disorders. We're both lesbians. Do you identify as a lesbian? This is, yeah, still. Cool. Yeah. We both use she, her pronouns. We do. Uh, we're both extroverts. <laughs> yeah, we are. We can talk a lot. <gasps> Really? <laughs> we laugh too much. Wait, don't. We can't make Jessica laugh or she can just die. Die. Please. Don't joke about my death if I actually have it. <laughs> oh my god. That I'm... would be so tragic if that happened during filming. That would be uh, terrible. Imagine the views though. Oh my god. Jersey! We both love learning. We do, yeah. We're, we're, we're information really hoarders. We keen interest in finding things out. We teach each other stuff all the time. We do. When I first moved here, I would ask Josie questions about British things or, or history and stuff. And she'd be like, I don't know. I'm like, you've never wondered. And she's like, no. And I'm like, I wish Jessica was here. When Jessica talks, <laughs> maybe try and pause talking. So I have a text x-ray next week. We'll be fine. Do you know why I say that? Like the chest x-ray will somehow make the cough better. It won't. Diagnostic tool. Yeah, we need investigations. <laughs> but there are some ways in which we are very different. I'm American. I'm very British. Yeah. <laughs> you are nocturnal. Yes, I definitely. It's called DSPS, delayed sleep phase syndrome. A lot of neurodivergent people have it where they're ideal. Like if they just never set alarms and let their body be natural, it would be like 2 a.m. to 10 a.m. would be like sleeping time a little bit later, a little bit earlier, depending. What time do you wake up? Like 5 a.m.? Well, I like 7 a.m. Just, you know, the regular wake up time. Yeah, I love the dark night Hello. time. 7 a.m. <laughs> time to go. You're a, you're a lover of the, of the darker clothing. Yes, I do like dark colors. Yeah, I just wear, you know, when you have a wife, you share a closet. Not, not everyone, like, I, that's just like the biggest perk of me of lesbianism for me is that you get to share clothes. Can't um, relate, absolutely can't relate. Um, so I just wear her clothes and they tend to be more um, desaturated colors instead of like clear dark colors. Interesting. But I'm leaning more towards dark colors lately because I got my colors done. You did. Yes. You did. And we are getting into winter. So. Yes, and I'm a dark winter, mm. so, mm. you know. You swear. I do swear. <laughs> Jessica does not. So we thought, just to play on our fun little friendship of differences, we make some videos giving some advice on any dilemmas you might be having in your life right now. Playing on our own special dynamics, we would give them in our own sweet and spicy ways. Yeah, I feel like I feel like spicy is an adjective that people would use to describe me. I would definitely use that to yeah. describe you. You're definitely sweet. Thank you. How do you keep your mood up after endless days in bed? Well, this is a great question. Uh, one that I feel primed to answer. For me, keeping my mood up isn't hard, so I'm not always the best person to give advice because I think it's a very person to person dependent. I can find the joy in the smallest thing and that tends to pull me through and I learned that from a very young age growing up being very ill and being like, well, guess I gotta just help myself, learn to self-soothe, oh goodness. Um, but I definitely have darker moments and I sort of lean on other people and the thing that helps is just opening up and talking to them. For me, I think the answer is always reaching out and asking for help when you need help. I love that you basically just said, uh, learn to dissociate from your emotions. <laughs> <laughs> it was easy for me. It's 
really important for me because I do spend a lot of time in bed to make the room that my bed is in be like the best room. I know that not a lot of people are are affected by their um, environment? environment as much as you and I are, but I think that if you've just been looking at the same walls that are in a color that you don't really love, the longer it happens, the more it can grate on your, on your nerves. So um, making sure there's lots of things that you enjoy in your space, make it your own wonderful place. Also, if you like pretend you're like a queen and everyone like, you don't, you don't have to go anywhere and do anything and you're choosing to be in bed, another dissociation one. I will not leave this bed because I must be waited on. I have a crush on a colleague from work. Is that bad? Having a crush is never bad. I don't know. I always say never pursue something with someone you have to see again. You know, roommates, coworkers, in-laws, terrible idea. But, but, okay, your in-laws. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and many, many relationships are started at work because you meet people through going to work. Yeah, just like a, a just a circumstantial reason. It's but the there's a difference. You meet people at school because you just meet a lot of people. Yeah, but there's a difference between having a crush and pursuing something with that person, right? Yeah, there's nothing wrong with having a crush on anyone. That's just about you. Yeah. Like you can have crushes on whatever you want. You can have a crush on a flower. You could <laughs> if you wanted. That is adorable. Flower. You can have a crush on the moon. <laughs> just saying. But yes, I mean, if you're going to pursue it, make sure it's you know then and equal partnership and uh, not crossing any boundaries. This no, no, bad. no crushes are bad, but don't pursue no crushes. it, in my opinion. We have no other information. Well, okay, <laughs> what, about, what about family businesses? I would hope family members aren't dating. No, uh, oh my God. <laughs> okay, so if a husband and wife own a business together, what, they're meant to get a divorce? Yes, they absolutely have to. It's very dark inside there. No, yeah. love, love everywhere. How do I come out as non-binary to my uninformed family? Is a PowerPoint too much? I love Oh my God. Idea. I love it. I made a PowerPoint to get my mother to buy me The Sims. <laughs> I perhaps would start drip feeding information rather than the full on, okay everyone, let's sit down, get ready, get the popcorn, lights are going down, here's the show. Start perhaps with little bits of information about here's what non-binary means. Here's a, here's a media that involves non-binary life. I mean, we are both cis women, but if you really want our, our advice about this, um, I guess my input would be, did you know there are, is people you can hire that will help you come out? What? So they can like go to like a family gathering with you or whatever as like your support person. I'm sure lots of people would do it for free. They're the ones that field the questions so that it's not, so that they, like the, the person who's coming out can take a break or whatever. So yes, I think you should do a PowerPoint. I think you should invite a friend or two um, that are there to, to support you in the moment and send me the PowerPoint. I would love to see it. Or yeah, have a supportive person there with you who you've spoken to ahead of time. Like, you know, when you need a date to a wedding and you can hire an actor to like come and be like, yeah, we've been, we're getting engaged soon or whatever. Like you can do the same thing for coming out. Yeah, I mean the actor at a wedding thing, maybe don't do that. Why not? What? And Hilarious. then what? What about afterwards? Yeah. And they're like, how's the wedding planning going? You're like, oh yes, we are no longer together. No, you just hire the same actor to go so to all what? the events. She might not be free. <laughs> Draw up a contract. Sorry, you have to be free on Christmas and Easter and any wedding. How long do you need to wait before asking the person you're dating to be exclusive? I waited two weeks. Um, I think, first of all, exclusivity is overrated. Uh, as a poly, oh, that's another difference we have. I'm polyamorous and you're monogamous. Very. Um, yeah, my, I'd say exclusivity is overrated, but also whatever makes you comfortable is what you should be sharing with the person you're dating. Because even if they react in saying, I'm not ready to be exclusive, however they react to you saying this is something you're interested in, you know, give you some clues as to what kind of partner they're gonna be when you ever do become exclusive. Really overreact or ghost you or whatever, like good riddance, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If ex exclusivity soon is something that you really want. I don't think that there's any specific times that are okay or not okay in anything concerning love. And if you are like a very, very monogamous person who doesn't love the idea of like, oh, we're, we're dating, but like 
with seeing other people and like you're going on dates with other people and I don't really know what's happening and what's going on there and, uh, and if that makes you feel uncomfortable then it's totally fine for you to be sharing that like that's okay don't feel like you have to push yourself to fit in with a dating culture that makes you feel uncomfortable and so then I went on a lot of first dates until I met someone who also was very much like, yeah, I just want to date one person. And we were like, great, let's just snap together. Really examining the reason why you want exclusivity as well, and then asking for those things instead of exclusivity, because that sounds like such a big, scary word, and mm. also can make some people feel like controlled or owned or, or whatever. But really, you, you deserve to feel agency over your own body and have your own boundaries respected. And for you, if you are sleeping with this person and you don't want to be sleeping with someone who is sleeping with other people, mm. the conversation you should have with the person you're dating isn't, we have to be exclusive. It's, I don't feel comfortable sleeping with someone who is sleeping with other people, or at least I need to know when like the next time we go to sleep with each other, let me know if you've been with someone in between the last time or whatever, so that you can fully consent to the situation. Like if that's your issue is like, I can't consent to sex if I know you've slept with someone yesterday, then have that conversation instead of the exclusivity one, if that makes sense. And then the answers that they'll give you will help you pinpoint them on a map as far as like if they're compatible with you at all. Or we don't sleep together until you're ready to be exclusive with me. Yeah, like for me, I really, like before I was married, um, I'm really into safe sex practices. And um, so for me, I would say I do not exchange fluids with anyone other than kissing unless they haven't slept with anyone else for three months. So for me, it was like, this is a safe sex boundary that I have. And that is the reason that I would care about exclusivity and like be, being in a safe sex circle. And so then, you know, because they, they'd want to be exclusive because they want to be able to go down on me. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's like a fun little dangle the carrot in front of the horse, you know? Yeah. <laughs> How do you deal with disagreements with friends? Fundamental versus minor. Intriguing. Blocked. Deleted. <laughs> wow. Do you have no friends that you disagree with? No. Because why are you arguing with me? You know? Well, why do you have to argue? <laughs> just, just kidding. I mean, though I, ha I have done that before, just blocked someone because of it. I mean, it was way worse than just like, oh, wow. they don't like french fries and I do, so I'm going to block them, you know. Is that even a disagreement? I can't get over that. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> I have Tory friends. Imagine how boring it would be to like have a friend who you agree, you have the same opinion and experiences and beliefs about every single thing. Exactly. Yeah. No, I think it's really interesting and I quite like having friends where we can have debates about things and you can get together as a group and you can have you know x like do we agree on this is this you know what do we think and it's great to have people who say you know oh i think this is not okay i think this is okay well i see a middle ground and then the next time you get together there's a different topic that we're all talking about and you know the sides have shifted and now the someone that you were arguing with last week is now oh you're on the same team and you're like yeah we're both agreeing this thing is good i think that's a really interesting way because i think as human beings none of us are one thing even when it comes to politics like no one is wholly like a conservative and no one's static right? either people grow and change throughout yeah their lives. people yeah. have a view point on immigration that might be conservative but they might have a viewpoint on gay marriage that would be considered liberal so then like where do they fall? I just don't think any single person is ever one thing because yeah. that's not how human brains work. I think you are definitely more tolerant than me <laughs> of others with differing opinions, but Obviously, also there's a if difference. Anyone was like massively transphobic, yeah, yeah, yeah. massively like homophobic. I mean, why are we friends? But <laughs> there we go. Um, if they were very racist, they wouldn't be my friend. Yeah. The things that we would be disagreeing on would be things that I'm like, I can see your viewpoint, I think it's wrong, but I understand why you, from your past lived experience, feel that way. Yeah, if I, how would I deal with a minor, a minor one versus a major one? I think I would probably deal with them the same way. I would, so say we're at a dinner party and someone invites someone that says something that I'm like, that is, very silly slash I hate that idea. Um, then I will just ask them a bunch of pointed questions so that they say the thing that I suspect that they actually mean and then try to embarrass them in front of everyone. Yeah, that does sound like you. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> but 
also empathy, you know? Yes. Be like, I can see how you got that idea, but have you ever considered this thing? Did you know that's actually not true what you just said? Studies mm. show this. Mm. Um, I'm, I don't, I'm not scared of being confrontational at all with people. I actually really enjoy being confrontational, but also people interpret me as being confrontational when I don't feel like I am. I feel like, I'm like, oh no, this is, we're having a fun debate. And then people think I'm like about to punch them or something. Yeah, I really enjoy that. There are some, there are some middle-aged people in my life who I very much enjoy having conversations with where they bring like Daily Mail talking points. And I'm like, oh, interesting. Well, let's chat. And um, I'm like, well, you think this, yes. However, studies have shown, um, and we can like have a back and forth on it and deconstruct why they think this way and be like, well, actually that was just one case of a thing that happened. It's not nationwide. That's not really happening. We don't need to actually worry about that. They can be very open depending on your point of view. And I think a lot of it has to do with being young, female and cute in a way. Oh, it's like you feel like you're disarming to them. Yes. Because they just see you as being curious and, or, or whatever, giving them a point to talk about their point. Yeah, and I'm very aware of that. So I'm like, oh, tell me more about this thing that you heard about. Gosh, well, I heard about this. Let me bring up this thing. Oh, look, it's a study. I just stumbled upon it. Yeah, it says not what you're saying. People definitely do that with me because I'm American in England now too, where it's, it's really disarming to people. It's like charming, like, oh, you don't know anything, you're American. And so, yeah, people find me, well, I don't know, maybe, maybe I can't tell, I can't really understand how other people perceive me. I'm trying to learn, but you know, still not got there. So yeah, I think um, coming from a place of, of being like, well, wow, I'm very interested to learn about your viewpoint, gosh. Um, is always an, a good way, I think, to resolve differences. But yes, if they're, if they're just um, awful, it's fine to walk away. Well, thank you so much, Stevie, for joining me for an episode of... Sweet Aunt Spicy Aunt. Sweet Aunt Spicy Aunt. And we pronounce it differently, so that's adorable. Aunt, wait, do it. Aunt? Aunt. Actually, my true accent is ain't. I will never be able to understand. <laughs> but I say aunt. Uh, okay so that people know what I'm talking about. Ant, ant, ant. <laughs> that was Sweet really good. Aunt. Oh, thanks. Aunt. Sweet aunt, spicy Sweet. aunt. Did I, is that how you talk? That was quite good. Yeah. Hop on over now to Stevie's channel where we're gonna have more of the same. We'll be answering some more of your interesting, interesting advice queries. I've got to say, these were fascinating. Yeah, I, I love absolutely it. loved doing this. Yeah, I love finding out what people want to know from us. I'd love to find out your answers. <laughs> well, thank you very much for watching. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. I've put all of my social media down in the description as well as Stevie's. So make sure you go and follow Stevie on everything. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.